For as long as we can remember, Chrisette Michelle has been the go-to entertainer to lend her powerhouse vocals to songs by artists like Jay-Z, Nas, and Kanye West, to name a few. She released several studio albums and even took home a Grammy in 2009 for the song Be OK featuring Will I Am. But after singing at then President elect Donald Trump's 2017 inaugural ball, she received backlash. For sure. People from countries I have cannot pronounce was calling my actual cell phone. Yeah, I believe. Almost immediately, her private life and her career went from sugar to sh. If you hate it when we sing in our videos, Sorry, I'm a champion. Sorry, I'm a champion. <laughs> but for the rest of y'all, go on and scoop up something to munch on at rrgsnacks.com, our online concession stand that has an assortment of five-star goodies like butter toffee peanuts, green apple licorice, and barbecue bacon jerky. To give you some better insight into this story, let's go back to 2016 when Chrisette married her then-manager, Doug Biggs Ellison. On her personal blog, she wrote that she eventually realized that a traditional life complete with marriage and children just wasn't her thing. She said, I realized he had the intentions of living in the same city, raising small opinionated beasts who would grow in my stomach. Apparently, this soul-quelling idea is called settling down. Eek, I just threw up in my mouth. However, she and Doug kept chugging along, and in 2017, they received a request from an organizer who wanted her to perform at Trump's inaugural ball. Doug quietly negotiated an upfront fee for Chrisette to perform the song Intentional. And so, long story short, I called Jonathan McReynolds, Todd Trebet, um, Travis Green, mm -hmm. and said, remember that performance we did uh, for the Gospel Awards? Can we do it again and try to be a source of upliftment? Jonathan and Ty declined the offer, but Travis and Chrisette decided they would perform the song as a duo. Various reports estimated she was paid a hefty fee of $750,000 for the performance, while the Washington Post confirmed she received a check for $75,000. Some people were appalled that a woman who sings about black girl magic would perform for a man that has a documented history of unfair practices toward women and people of color dating back to the 70s. People advised Grissette to get her Google on and do a little bit of research about the ads he placed, calling for the execution of five young black and Latino men, also known as the Central Park Five, who were later shown to be innocent. During her research, she might have seen the freak nasty comments about women. Hey, when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the put. It soon became evident that Chrisette was aware of all those things, and nothing was going to keep her away from the inaugural ball stage. She told Billboard.com, I felt automatically committed to making sure that I stood up for the women who felt disrespected and the minorities who felt disrespected. There was national outrage from her fans and fellow entertainers. Questlove tweeted that he'd pay Chrisette not to perform, and Spike Lee wrote in an Instagram post, I was thinking about using Chrisette's song Black Girl Magic in my Netflix series She's Gotta Have It. Not anymore. Days later, she released a poetic response that she called No Political Genius. She wrote, We can either shift for love or we can shift for division, and I'd much rather shift for love. Nobody was trying to hear all that. So Chrisette took to her blog to write an open letter titled, We Can't Be Present If We're Silent. In the letter, she wrote that she is willing to be a bridge for the country. She added, I am here representing you because this is what matters. Wait, but who the hell even asked her to do all that? The former R&B diva star got a little shook when a Bruce Springsteen cover band called the B Street Band withdrew from the event amid criticism from members of Bruce's actual band. And then fellow singer Jennifer Holliday committed to performing but eventually caved under pressure and canceled her appearance. Instead of acknowledging all the red flags busting her upside the head, Chrisette told Billboard.com she turned her phone off after seeing what happened to Jennifer because she didn't want the outrage to sway her own decision. I was like, guys, I'm not even famous enough to be canceled. No. I sing so, I sing so, I play the piano. Mm. Like, who cancels a piano player? Later on, she took things one step further by changing her phone number. 
It wasn't just complete strangers and entertainers who were upset at her. Chrisette told Billboard.com that several of her family members are members of the Black Panthers and many of them decided they didn't want to speak to her anymore, nor were they going to support the family members who were supporting Chrisette. On the day of the event, she was under the impression that she and Travis would perform right after Trump's first speech, which would have given her an opportunity to meet Trump as their paths cross on the stage. However, Chrisette told Billboard.com that at the last second, the woman who organized the event told her, Now, you're going to go first, and he's going to go after you. In other words, that meant Chrisette wouldn't get the chance to meet Trump after all. <laughs> Girl, what you thought? Chrisette was so bummed out, she told the organizer, My family has disowned me. If you decide to Google me, you'll see that America is writing about me in their newspapers. I'm the black poster child for Discord right now, and he's not going to shake my hand? Chrisette tried to remain optimistic, and she told herself that maybe she'd have the opportunity to meet him later on during the event when everyone was mingling. But yeah, that didn't happen either. So, was Trump's administration using Chrisette as a token? Hmm. After singing her heart out on stage, she left and went radio silent. But America wasn't done with her just yet. She was immediately expelled from the cookout, and her career took a nosedive expeditiously. That was my first time in a moment like that yeah. as, as a... As a um as a high-profile individual. Mm -hmm. Sure. I had never experienced that much negativity. Her label dropped her. She lost an album distribution deal, and her fans alienated her. There were rumors that other gigs and opportunities were snatched away from her as well. The continued backlash pushed her into a deep depression. She told Billboard.com that she would wear pajamas all day long, and she would frequently wake up next to a bottle of Bacardi and prescription pills. She was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, and she even contemplated taking her own life. In October 2017, she hopped on Instagram and revealed she had suffered a miscarriage. She also included a graphic photo of some clots, which many perceived to be the remnants of the child she lost. Well, internet detectives reverse image searched the photo and discovered the picture didn't even belong to Chrisette. I know you lie. The original photo was traced back to a babycenter.com community forum, where a woman posted it to inquire about her own tragedy. Chrisette later deleted the post and confessed to The Breakfast Club that the image didn't belong to her. She added, Many women post their photos on different websites to see what's going on in their bodies. Myself identifying with somebody else's photo, I wanted people to know the severity of what I experienced, so I put something up to show it. Say what now? So yeah, Chrisette was slapped with another L for lying, and people started to wonder if she really did suffer a miscarriage or if it was all a ploy to get some attention and sympathy. She made another appearance on The Breakfast Club at the end of January 2017. This time, she told the hosts that she was working on a TV show called No Political Genius, where she would talk to politicians across the country. As of this video, the show has yet to premiere. Finally, 10 months after singing for Trump, she deeply regretted her performance. But one of the main things that it taught me is that you can have love, mm -hmm. you can have good intentions, but you have to have wisdom yeah. in where you bring your love. You say, don't cast your pearls amongst the swine. Sometimes we can't bring who we are everywhere. Mm, right, right, right. And so that was the hard lesson, a humbling lesson, yeah. but it was a lesson and yeah. I learned it. Yeah. She went the independent route and released her sixth studio album in 2018 called Out of Control. The album didn't even make a dent on the charts. She went back on the road to perform, but was barely able to sell any tickets. The Washington Post shared a photo of one of her concerts at a 1,500-seat venue, and there were no more than 30 fans in attendance. With her career at a standstill, she and her husband also decided to end their marriage in 2019. She told Terrell's YouTube channel that getting canceled put a lot of strain on their relationship. Three years after filing for divorce, she told her Instagram followers that her divorce still hadn't been finalized. Yikes! In 2021, TV host John Murray released a tweet asking that Chrisette be uncancelled after seeing the overwhelming support Kanye West received for his music and merchandise despite the fact that Kanye openly supported Trump and rocked a MAGA hat. 
Chrisette retweeted his message and began to wonder why there was such a double standard. Why was she the only one catching so much heat for her inaugural ball performance? She wasn't the only black person on that stage. Travis was right beside her, but he didn't receive nearly as much backlash as Chrisette. Was this a case of the black community giving black men a pass and turning the black woman into the villain? As of this video, Chrisette hasn't released a full-length album since 2018, although she still releases singles and performs for her loyal fans whenever she can. Some people have forgiven her, while others think her cancellation should be permanent. Some people just can't get over the fact that Chrisette single-handedly destroyed her career by performing for a man that would later turn out to be a one-term, four-time indicted ex-president. And he's never even uttered one word to her and wasn't gracious enough to shake her hand after she put her career on the line. Dang, doll. Will she ever regain her footing in the industry or is her career donezo? We're unsure, but for now, she's staying focused on the things she's able to control. On her blog, she writes, This world can deliver big heartbreak, but love has the power to restore, uplift, and comfort. It's bigger than me, and I hold on to it for power, peace, and strength. If you enjoyed this video, let us know down below and thanks for watching RRG.